Hey guys, Bingo Cat here. So today I'm doing another operating system comparison video. I'm comparing Windows 7 Professional versus Windows 10 Professional, both 64-bit. Now Bingo Cat, you may ask, why would you even make a video like this? Comparing Windows 7 and comparing Windows 10 is like apples and oranges, right? They're both really good operating systems and there isn't entirely a clear winner on which one is better. And not only that, but Windows 7 and Windows 10 are both so popular, so why would I compare it? And my answer to that question is, why wouldn't you compare it if you have the chance? I have Windows 7 and Windows 10 running in VMware. I give them the exact same settings, and except the hard drive size, just ignore that. All right, so keep in mind, Windows 7 specifications, if you want to run Windows 7, the minimum requirements are a 1 gigahertz or faster 32-bit or 64-bit processor, 1 gigabyte of RAM for 32-bit operating system, or 2 gigabytes of RAM for a 64-bit operating system, a 16 gigabyte hard drive space for a 32-bit operating system, or a 20 gigabyte hard drive space for a 64-bit operating system, and the minimum requirements for Windows 10 are... <gasps> Drum roll, please. The exact same. Now, I find it really cool that the minimum requirements for Windows 7 and the minimum requirements for Windows 10 are literally the exact same because this was released in late 2009. This was released in mid-2015. So, you know, a good five and a half years where computer hardware definitely developed and increased. And these still both have the exact same specifications. So as a result, on Windows 10, for the most part, you can actually run this on some pretty old technology. Like, I've seen videos of people running Windows 10 on 2005 computers. I find that amazing. Anyways, let's go ahead and turn both of these operating systems on. And so, you know, even though I started up Windows 7 first, it actually booted up later than Windows 10. Let's type in my super secret passcode here. Now the first thing I want to point out in both operating systems is the user interface definitely looks a little bit different. The concept of both operating systems as far as the user interface goes is about the same, right? It boots you to this desktop, right? With the taskbar at the bottom of the desktop and various icons you can click in the bar and both have the recycling bin by default on the desktops, right? And so, yeah, Windows 7 uses something called the Windows Arrow theme. What Windows Arrow basically does is, it's a theme that allows you to give you this fancy transparent effects, like behind the windows and behind the taskbar, right? Well, Windows 10 uses something called Flat Design. It was originally called Metro by Microsoft in Windows 8, but they scraped it for the modern look, and now I don't think there's even a name for the UI of Windows now. But for all intents and purposes, this is a flat design user interface. Now, they allowed you to keep the transparency in the taskbar and the start menu like they had in Windows 7. They actually ripped this out in Windows 8, but they added it back in Windows 10. And it looks very nice. Now the icons you notice in Windows 7 are straight from Windows Vista, or the icons in Windows 10 on the other end are brand spanking new. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the default web browser on both the operating systems. Windows 7 is updated to the latest and greatest Internet Explorer browser. I, the initial build of the Internet Explorer 11 was released in 2013 and was released for Windows 7 and Windows 8. In Windows 10 it comes with a brand spanking new web browser called Microsoft Edge. As you can see, this this browser, since it's brand new, looks not exactly like Internet Explorer, but they're both great browsers, but this uses a newer layout engine, so there is a better chance it'll display web pages more correctly than in Internet Explorer 11 over here. Oh, the other thing about Edge is that it is designed to be used with a touch screen as well as keyboard or mouse. Since Edge is still a work in progress browser, it does not have a lot of features like Internet Explorer 11 has like support for you know plugins and extensions. Edge at the current moment in time doesn't support any extensions at all. Let's dive into the programs list for both operating systems. The default programs list that is. So Windows 7 comes with let's see desktop gadget gallery which is, desktop gadget is pretty cool. I miss the gadgets. It's basically what allows you to have stuff like a CPU meter, a slideshow, what else is there? Basically just cool nifty little teeny tiny programs on your desktop that provide you with real up-to-date information of stuff you want to know. Like let's say you wanted to know the weather, right? You could just place a weather gadget here and it'll immediately tell you what temperature it is outside. 
Now, Windows 10, even though it doesn't have gadgets anymore, it does have the live tiles here in the start menu, which do almost the exact same stuff as the gadgets on the Windows 7 desktop. Windows 7 comes with, you know, by default when it was released, it came with Internet Explorer 8, but once again, it can be upgraded to 11. It also comes with Windows DVD Maker by default, and you can watch DVDs by default. Now, Windows 10, it doesn't even allow you to watch DVDs by default, like DVD playback is not supported in Windows 10, which to some people it might seem really ridiculous because DVDs are still have a lot of uses, right? But to a lot of other people, newer computers aren't coming with DVD drives, and with the rise of internet services, I don't really see any reasons to use DVDs anymore personally. Windows 7 also, like if you open accessories, it comes with normal Windows stuff like calculator, notepad, paint, remote, desktop, the run command. And Windows 7 was actually the last version of the classic Windows games, as they call it, like Solitaire, etc. This version of Windows 7 doesn't actually have it because this is a professional version, but and other versions of Windows 7 it does have it. Windows 10 on the other hand, this is a professional version, but it does come with Candy Crush Soda Saga. Anyways, so as far as other stuff comes, it does, in my personal opinion, Windows 10 comes with a lot of bloatware. Like, the apps don't really take up much resources, but I really don't need Microsoft money installed by default in my personal opinion like all this stuff that Windows 7 had installed by default had a very useful point as far as I go I don't want to use Microsoft money right and so some of these apps Microsoft lets you uninstall but there are other apps in here like phone this is not a phone so I don't need the phone app unfortunately I can't uninstall it at all but yeah as far as default apps at Windows 10 includes includes 3d builder calculator calendar camera i do like like calculator for example is basically more or less just an updated form of the calculator that was included in windows 7. i mean it can do almost the exact same stuff this ui though it's just newer now as far as start menus for both operating systems goes they look fundamentally similar except over here, this is basically the Windows XP start menu, which was also the Windows Vista start menu. What this does is it provides you shortcuts to various parts of your computer, and over here is just basically your programs list. Like, this is recent programs, and this is all of your programs. Windows 10 is a little tiny bit different. As far as links to frequently accessed parts of your computer goes, it's down here and it's barely any, but if you want more links, just right-click in the start menu, and they're there. Um, this is most used programs. on. Like, they also have suggested programs, basically ads in the start menu. But you can turn off ads in the start menu, and that's good. And then you click your all apps list, and you can scroll down this pretty much like the same way you could scroll down your list in Windows 7. Now, looking at the various settings in each operating system, Windows 7, for the most part, comes with one place you can view all your settings for your computer, and that's just the traditional Windows control panel. Now, by default, it opens you in category view, which I actually don't really like because it's you have to dig down in all these categories just to get to the setting you want. I always prefer the large icons view or the small icons view because you can basically see almost all the configurable settings on your computer at one single time. Windows 10 on the other hand comes with two places you can change your settings. It comes with the new and improved settings app, which I like the settings app, except there's no way to view all your settings at once. But other than that, I like the settings app. The user interface is so much better than the control panel in my opinion. Microsoft, I believe, wants this to replace the control panel but they haven't finished migrating it over, so you also have to use a separate control panel sometimes, which is still there and still looks the exact same as it did in Windows 7, but it is extremely confusing where they go sometimes. Because of reasons like this, I don't even try and go into the control panel or settings app in Windows 10 to change a setting. I just type whatever I want to change into the start menu in hopes that it finds it, instead of me having to manually hunt for it. Let's talk about the Windows 10 privacy issues that Windows 10 is famous for. Now, Windows 10 is famous for supposedly collecting more telemetry than Windows 7, and all that means it's basically just collecting data on how you use your computer. 
which depending on who you are, it can be a good or bad thing. Now, first of all, I just want to point out that there are updates that automatically get installed to Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 that turns on a lot of telemetry by default and more or less provides the exact same telemetry and data tracking that Windows 10 has. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that Windows 7 since day one would and can collect telemetry about you. Telemetry could be as, as simple as Windows 7 when a program crashes, it going, do you want to send this crash data to Microsoft? And you going, yes. Now Windows 10, all of that is basically turned on by default. So yeah, essentially Windows 10 gives you less privacy than Windows 7, but its privacy concerns are definitely blown out of the water. Now the general concept of Windows 7 was basically Windows 7 was a very conservative operating system in comparison to almost any other version of Windows ever released except like maybe Windows 2000 and Windows Me. The go entire goal of Windows 7 was to fix the messes that Windows Vista made. Windows Vista was a buggy and slow and unsecure operating system for the first year of its life until it got the first service packs. And so Microsoft didn't make that many major UI changes to the operating system. I'm not kidding, they kept it almost the exact same. Where Windows 10, on the other hand, wasn't afraid to change the UI at all. Windows 8's UI was such a drastic departure from Windows 7 that in Windows 10 they tried to make it more Windows 7-ish. And so yeah, the entire goal of Windows 10 is this is a version of Windows to be used on all your devices. Microsoft wants you to use the exact same version of Windows 10 on your phone and on your tablet and on your computer. And that's very cool, you ask me. Now, Windows 7, on the other hand, was only designed for desktops and laptops in mind. It does have a touch mode, but its primary goal wasn't to increase the amount of touch users using Windows 7. That was there just in case someone wanted a touch screen. Windows 10, on the other hand, you could say that Windows 10 was almost designed with touch in mind. Like their new web browser, for example, is extremely easy to get around just using a touch screen. So yeah, if I had to choose which one I like better, Windows 7 versus Windows 10, I would say it's a really tough decision. You know why? Because Windows 7 was fantastic for its time. It's a really polished product. At the same time, this was released about seven years ago, and technology has changed quite a lot since seven years ago. Hence, Windows 10. Windows 10 has stuff that Windows 7 will never have. It has its own app store, for example. Windows 7 does not have that. I love Windows 7 because it's a complete fully polished product. Windows 10 on the other hand is a little bit less polished than Windows 7, hence the dual settings and control panels mishmash nonsense. But if I had to choose one I like better, I would choose Windows 10. So yeah, that was today's video. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you guys liked this video. If you didn't, please tell me why. And goodbye.